Hello, welcome back to Nix Whatever. This time I'm going to talk about something you can do in your shell that'll make it look a little bit nicer, I think be a little bit more useful, and we're going to walk through some Nix stuff along the way. So when I list a directory in my shell, it oops, doesn't look like that, it looks something like this. Nice colors, you can see uh, markdown files are a particular color, directories are a certain color, shell scripts are orange. Um, it's just a subtle visual aid that makes it a little bit quicker to parse that directory. Uh, most of you, when you run ls, it'll probably look like this, or at best, like that. Now, there are two main differences between these terminals and the reason why it looks like this. One is that when I run ls version in this top one, I'm using GNU ls, which is the one that Linux uses, but uh, using it on Mac OS. Here, if I run ls version, I've got BSD ls, which doesn't even support the version flag. Um, the other difference is that in this top terminal, if I look at this variable ls colors, I've got a whole bunch of unintelligible stuff, where in the bottom one, echo ls colors is empty. So the thing that basically turns this on is running GNU ls and then setting the ls colors variable to something useful. So um, the place where that, the, the contents of this ls colors variable came from is github.com slash trapdoor slash ls colors, spelled with two zeros. I'll put this in the, the video description. But basically what we're going to do is take ls colors, uh, which is a file that doesn't quite look like what the variable was. So this goes through a uh, kind of post-processing step through another utility called dir colors. So what we do is run that file through dir colors, export that to the variable ls colors when we start up our shell, and then configure ls to run as GNU ls. So we're going to use Nix to do most of that stuff. First off, uh, we're going to cheat and just copy this file. I'm going to copy the whole contents here, and I'm just going to paste it into, bleh, into home slash ls colors. And we're going to close this terminal that already has the nice colors. Bye. OK. So we have this file at home slash ls colors. Now what we need to do is run dir colors. So that exists somewhere in Nix. And I can run comma dir colors home slash ls colors. And we'll see, aha, it's in core utils. OK, so that's the name of the thing from which we're getting dir colors. And that gives us this big thing that looks a lot like what we printed in the terminal earlier, and then export ls colors. So this actually expects to be evaluated in your shell. So really, it wants eval that. And we pick core utils again, and now echo ls colors. Great, so that's one of two. The other one is we want to run ls from core utils which is where it also lives. And we have to pass a couple of flags, color auto and F. And if we pick that, great, it worked. But you obviously don't want to run ls like this all of the time, nor do you want to run this every time you start a new shell. So how do we persist that? Well, um, both of those ran from core utils, so we could do nixenv ia nixpackages.coreutils. And that would do it. But something you'll notice here is now if I look at the binaries that were provided by my Nix profile, uh, there's a whole lot of them where I didn't show you before, but I'll erase it to demonstrate. Before, we only had Nix and Nix related stuff. After, we have all sorts of stuff that's like very core operating system stuff, which has a high chance of messing things up with various shell scripts. So I would recommend not straight up installing core utils into your Nix profile because you'll get things like base name might behave differently, touch might behave differently. The GNU core utils are all a little bit different from the BSD ones and not 100% compatible. So this isn't the way to go, but it's kind of on the right track because we can see we have LS and somewhere dir colors from here. So what we really want is to install core utils, but only those two files, right? Uh, that way we have dir colors, and we can use that 
in our shell in it, and we can alias ls to just ls with color auto and f. So the way we do that is we can write our own mixed derivation. So we're going to open a new file called, I don't know, whatever.nix. And the first thing we have to do is we'll assign a variable, and we're going to call that variable packages. And it's going to be the result of importing mix packages. And don't worry too much about that syntax. Just understand that we are importing the entire mix packages repo and calling it packages. And then what we're doing with that is we're going to run a function in mix packages called run command. Run command takes three arguments. One is a name, some kind of um, just attributes. We don't need to specify attributes. And then a command to run. That's a multi-line string. So name, we're going to call it ls colors. It's kind of arbitrary. You can call it whatever you like. But the command uh, is expected to generate something to this file or directory called out. It hasn't created it yet just for the derivation to succeed. The expectation is that it has to create that as a either a directory or a file. So we're going to do make dir p out slash bin. So when we make something in a bin directory, that automatically gets added to your profile, uh, your profile's path when you install this derivation. So what we want is for out slash bin slash ls and out slash bin slash dir colors to exist. So all we have to do is um, create sim links from somewhere to those, those paths. Now, what that actually looks like is just packages.coreutils slash bin slash ls, and in this case, slash dir colors. So, and I don't need the semicolon. So what's happened here is we're creating a new derivation that kind of implicitly depends on core utils, meaning it'll tag core utils and, and prevent it from being garbage collected while this one is installed. And um, it just symlinks into the, the two particular things we wanted out of core utils. So if we try to install this, so normally when we would install something, we would do nix and dash i dash capital A nix packages dot something. But here we don't do that because this this file doesn't exist in nix packages. What we actually want is nixenv dash i dash f um, whatever dot nix. And that'll build it and install it. And now if we look in nix profile slash bin, we'll see we have dir colors and ls just like we wanted. And um, if I type which ls now, I'll see it's this new one that we just installed. Okay, so now if I run ls uh, color equals auto f, I get this. But if I would start a new shell, I get these uh, less exciting colors. Um, so I can demonstrate why this is, see we don't have different colors for different file extensions, which is what we got from dir colors. So if we would now do eval, dir colors home slash ls colors and then ls now we're back to what we wanted so basically what we want to do now is open our shell config normally for most people that would be bash profile i'm using z shell so mine is z shell rc we want to add eval dir colors home slash ls colors obviously you'd probably want to put this file in a place that isn't just your home directory but whatever and then alias ls equals ls color equals auto dash capital F. Now, if you start a new shell and go to dev again and run ls, there you go. So, um, and then if I do nix and query installed, I'll see our ls colors there. So that was uh, how we did that. Um, one more thing I will actually show you is, so we have this ls colors in our home directory, which is kind of weird and gross. So what if we would, uh, what if we would move it into the next derivation? So let's move it into just temporarily move home slash ls colors into this directory where we had our whatever dot next, and then we can say ln dash s um, 
Hmm. Let's do copy dot slash ls colors into out slash share slash ls colors. And then we'll have to make the directory out slash share. So now what we expect to see is this directory should be linked into our next profile as well. And let's just see if that's true. So if I do now nixenvif whatever.nix, it should replace the existing one. And it does. And then if I list nix profile, I should have a share directory. And I do. And if I look in share, I have ls colors. So our config in Z shell RC becomes this. And then we can verify that I don't have a home slash ls colors anymore. And if I start a new shell and run ls, I get the colors still. So that's uh, that's a little bit of experimentation with a, a, a Nix thing. Um, I would post that Nix file, but I'm not going to. You can copy it yourselves. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy Colorful LS. Something that came up in the a, a Nix or um, a Slack channel that you may not be aware of is dev-til. Um, people post cool developer workflow stuff. Uh, the thing that kind of prompted me to do this video today is somebody noticed a, a utility called Color LS. And you can run that, and if I had the right font installed, you'd see cool icons next to all these things too. So that is another thing you can do. You could even alias ls to color ls, presumably. But uh, it doesn't use ls colors, which is both better and worse because it has its own preferences. But yeah, there's a different option. So yeah, I might do more of these kind of developer workflow type things. Um, not really sure yet. Uh, let me know if this was of interest. Uh, thanks.